What's up, buds? Fly High FPV, and I want to answer a question today. Did DJI 03 kill the GoPro, as has been claimed? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start you out right and tell you no. No, it did not. If you want the best image quality on the market, GoPro has got DJI licked and will continue to lick them. I think the only thing that DJI has ever built better than GoPro is drones. <laughs> Rip GoPro Karma. Um, but yeah, for cameras, DJI has just never had the edge in image quality. GoPro's always had it. They always had better stabilization. Uh, I still feel like the DJI stabilization isn't even worth using. Uh, I just turn it off and don't use it at all. And I am pleased to announce that, uh, they just added support for gyro support for the Action 2. So that's pretty dope because now you can, uh, run gyro flow and stabilize that, uh, post which you couldn't do before, uh, and I'm kind of surprised they're giving support to the Action 2 since the 3 is out at this point. Uh, but, you know, kudos to DJI for uh, making this camera continue to be better because uh, it is a great little camera. Um, but is this killing the GoPro? No. And here's what I think. I think GoPro has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and heavier over the years and added more and more and more screens and made it more and more bloated. And their cameras continue to be the best as far as image quality goes for an action camera. But they're starting to get the hint. They, you get this Mini 11 that's smaller and lighter weight and gets you where you need to be. But uh, it's got its own problems with overheating and more importantly, the freezing. The freezing is the biggest issue with this guy. Um, but they did step in the right direction. They lost a ton of weight off of the camera and were able to keep the image quality where it was. So I like what they were doing with it. Uh, Action 2 has really came in and stepped in for my freestyle game. Um, I have loved the weight reduction of the Action 2, even at the sacrifice of image quality. My feeling is that if I'm freestyling, I don't have to have the very, 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 very best image and this thing is just fine at second tier is is good enough and so i've been really really enjoying this um it has been fantastic for me uh but it comes with major major drawbacks and the drawbacks are going to be the internal storage and the battery um it's only got like 22 gigs of internal storage and when that internal storage fills up or the battery gets low you gotta connect it to this thing and turn it on and open up the menu and go in here and hit export and it'll export all your footage from the internal storage to the SD card that would be in this slot. It just dumps and fills this thing up. Uh, but uh, it means that you can only fly like three to five to eight packs before this thing is full or the battery is dead. And then you've got to wait for 20 to 30 minutes to dump footage. And that's a really, really big inconvenience unless you have like two of them. So you can like daisy chain and have one of them on the drone and one of them charging and dumping. Um, but uh, then you're investing into two of these cameras and uh, yeah. Uh, but the weight savings are unreal. Yeah. Um, going from a full Hero 10 with a case, 211 grams, I go down to this Action 2 and it's only 76 grams. I, mean, I lose a ton of weight. That so much weight reduction that you can really feel a difference in the flight and that's what's really important here is better flight feel and but you're getting that by reducing weight on your quads uh, so then the O3 is the new king I feel like for freestyle anyway uh, this thing has just better image quality than I've ever had in an FPV feed but then its image quality is at least as good as the action 2 if not even a hair better and so I have ditched the Action 2 and the GoPro <laughs> El Mini and the 11, the 10 full size just because I don't need them anymore. I can run the cameras just like this, the quad without any kind of extra camera, and I'm saving from where I was flying here, I was saving 211 grams. This is like a whole battery I've shaved weight off of. Which I've even gone down to smaller batteries now. I'm running 1100s on here instead of a 6S 1300 and just feeling the the advantage in the fly performance just because I've lost so much weight and gotten it down to to where I really 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 want it to be um I I still uh, keep a cameras like this and still plan to use these cameras for gig work anytime I'm being paid 
anytime I want the best image quality I can get, like I go out and shoot nature stuff, I'm probably going to pop one of these cameras on and fly that day. But for throwing it in the concrete, oh my God, dude, just an actions or an O3 air unit and that's it. Uh, really seems to be the best. Uh, just a quad weighs like 655 grams now, which is the lightest it's been in years because uh, of these pigs. And uh, I'm going to keep one of these pigs around um, for my gig work, maybe two. But uh, this, this guy, I feel like O3 killed the action too. It, it just swooped in and killed it. Unless you're still on analog, and then the action two is still really awesome because you don't have a good DVR yet. But uh, the DVR in this is just so good. I'm shooting everything at 2.7K by 120. Um, just absolutely loving it. All my posts and vi videos in the last like three months have all been action. I mean, O3 footage and, uh, except for the one where I compared it directly with the action two and the GoPro, uh, I, this solves a major problem too, with the battery and the storage. Um, you know, this guy, it was constantly going dead. I, I can put a 128 gig card in here and it'll run for days and days and days. Uh, usually a good day of like 20 packs and I got about 50, 60 gigs of space used up. Uh, so it's only half UA using the SD card. Um, I, I don't have to worry about batteries because as soon as I plug the quad in, the camera powers up. Uh, so that has been fantastic. Um, the, this guy has the SD card, but it's got the battery stuff. And I find that the battery performance is pretty good on this, but it has a major advantage of not having to have this stupid battery pack. Uh, you can plug USB right into it and charge it, quick charge USB-C, uh, but it freezes up sometimes while charging, so beware of that. And uh, if you haven't got your firmware updated and you got one of the first run GoPros, you may just freeze up just uh, just flying around. Two, three minutes in the back, it may just freeze, so be wary of that. Uh, I, I'm actually hearing reports of the full-size Hero 11 having the same freezing issues too from a couple of different pilots at this point. But it seems to be far more widespread on the, the Mini 11. Uh, still, phenomenal camera. Uh, well, just, just don't, don't really lose my footage, man. <laughs> so uh, I think the, the kind of wrap this all up. Uh, did they kill the GoPro? No. I think they've been steadily chipping away at GoPro for a long time and have, have won the freestyle market over with the Action 2 first, and now with this new iteration, it's basically an Action 2 plus FPV. Uh, O3 is where it's at. That's the new champion. Uh, these guys, still best image quality out there, but uh, I just don't want to carry the weight anymore. Uh, and I don't want the liability of it either. I don't want to be breaking $400 GoPros uh, every time I go out and fly and drop shit into the concrete. Uh, so I'm happy to be leaving these behind. Put the whole system locked up inside of titanium where it's nice and safe. Um, yeah, so definitely O3 for me. I've got it over to two of my quads. I got one left on an OG air unit and uh, just super, super happy with this. My one uh, complaint on the O3 air unit, it, its deficit is a similar deficit that the Action 2 had and that is low light. Um, the dynamic range is not great. But it's been improved with a recent firmware update. But the low light is still a bit of a struggle. Um, I can fly in and out of parking decks. But it does take a little bit for that balance to come through. And then um, to uh, just you just won't see as far into the evening as you would before. I think if I was still, if I was flying a lot of night and parking lots and stuff like that, I would keep an OG air unit or a Vista around. Uh, I still don't recommend the Polar camera. Uh, I just do not like the 60 FPS cams at all. I would just keep with uh, one of the 120 frame per second cameras and do the best you can in the low light. But uh, O3 for me, and when you are using the O3, be sure you're using it on the right modes. Uh, if you're using V2 goggles like I am, and I still think the V2 goggles have the best v uh, experience, um, you get the V2 goggles, you want to put them on a 120 frame per second mode. And that needs to be one of the two, which is either 1080 by 120 or 2.7K by 120. That's going to get you the lowest possible latency in the goggles. And at 2.7K by 120, you can be in 4.3 mode. And that's going to give you the best image quality you can get onto the DVR. 
uh, while keeping the frame rate as low as possible. You can beef it up and go for like 4K, but you're going to be dropping your uh, frame rate down to like 60, and that's going to add another 10 or 15 milliseconds of latency to your flight and ruin the flight feel, and I don't recommend that at all. I would keep it on 2.7K by 120 just all the time, honestly. That's just where it should always be. And uh, if you're a cine pilot and you don't do a lot of ups and downs, then maybe you don't need it to be in 4.3 mode. Uh, you prefer the 16 by 9 wide wide. But uh, for me, flying acrobatically, I, I want 4.3 so I can see above and below me a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that is it for me. Um, what else? Oh, rock steady stabilization on these. I, honestly, I think the built-in stabilization is just trash. I don't run it whatsoever. I just turn it off, leave it off. It is garbage. Uh, but you can run them through GyroFlow now if you need to uh, stabilize. But again, for me, if I am doing need stabilization, it's because I'm doing gig work. And if I'm doing gig work, I'm going to be running one of these cameras. And these cameras make my life so much easier if I have to do stabilization because I can just uh, hit HyperFlow on, or HyperSmooth on the... Uh, camera before I start recording and it'll all be worked out for me and I won't have to do any post-processing work or match up gyro data or configure any bullshit uh, far 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 simpler now if you need maximum control you're deep 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 into the cine film stuff and you need to be able to control every aspect of it then gyro flow is far 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 more controllable but uh, to me, that's overcomplication, and I just uh, would rather run this if I need stabilization. For freestyle, I'm no stab all day long, and uh, yeah, O3 air units. If you need O3s, I've got them at my site, uh, flyhighfpv.com. Uh, I also print all these mounts to keep your expensive cameras safe. Uh, this is the skull mount. I make these for most of the GoPro frames. Or most of the GoPro case styles for like Hero 5, 6, 7, uh, the 8s, the 9s, 10s, and 11s. Uh, just such a beast. This is this the beefiest thing if you want to hit concrete. Um, rugged frames are really, really, really strong and beefy too. Emphasis on lens protection. Uh, and we make sure all the corners are covered up and nice and secure to the frame. Uh, this one's a little different the way it mounts because it mounts on the Armaton Marmot. But uh, normally you're going to have four screw holes that mount on your posts uh, or, you know, a loop around a horizontal standoff just uh, depends on how your frame design is. But I can do any frame, uh, any camera. This is the Action 2 case. Nice thick lips here to help keep it from uh, accidentally ejecting. You don't want any of that. Uh, and a nice flens around the layer just to keep... Uh, a flare flare around the lens just to keep your lens from getting smashed up uh, that is usually the goal of all these cases and then even on the uh, o3 air unit i got your protection right here uh, this is what i call the fat lip bumper for the armaton frames i make them for the marmot the badger uh, the rooster the chameleon ti um, probably can even make one for the beaver if you got the new frame from them uh, but this one not only does it protect your frame and give you uh, that front cam bumper to keep your camera alive, but also replaces the cam savers and gives you a mount for the camera so that this thing is soft mounted in here and really helps to keep it safe. If you do somehow manage to get a hit in there, the camera's just going to flex back out of the way instead of uh, being stiff and getting hurt. And then in the back, I've got the lollipop for the O3. Uh, this guy is just a big... TPU wrapper for your antenna just to keep it all nice and safe so that no matter how much concrete you bang around it on It's gonna uh, just keep on bashing and they do custom mounts for the uh, receivers too, of course An immortal T, but I can do your ELRS or dual tracer mini T's or even the uh, The old antenna tubes, but hit me up flyhighfpv.com uh, I'll always help you out if you ever need a thing. Just let me know I'm here for the community. Peace.